Hello everyone and welcome back to Milo Farms. Well, we are getting ready to put the snowmobiles away for the year, getting everything cleaned up and tidied up and getting them ready for storage. So first thing I always do is take them out of the trailer, bring them back here into this driveway that's gravel and let them sit for a day or two to melt all the snow off. So as you can see, the snow's melted off most of the way on the back phaser here, but the Mountain Max still has a few days to go. Then the other thing I do is I use this kind of cheapo old uh, carpet cleaner water vacuum and I vacuum off the top of the skis all the water that's in there around everything make sure there's no rocks or anything inside of the ski areas where they pivot get those all cleaned up and wash the machines down so in a couple days once these are all dried off we'll take them back and get them in storage well we've got a couple of them moved back into position now for storage the way we store them in the garage here is just backed up kind of in the corner uh, in front of the fireplace there you're not going to be needing the fireplace in the Summertime, so right there in front of it's a good place to put them. We'll put them here like this with the next one in front of it here, and same in front of the Mountain Max, and then the other antique one will go over in the front in the corner. So once we get them in the shop, what I always like to do is I always get them backed in, get them all positioned where they're going to go. We've already cleaned them off and everything outside. Go ahead and take off the drive belt off of each machine, and I'll usually just lay it back here in the back. I find that that works pretty well for keeping the drive belts to last a little bit longer and then also it allows me to start them and run them a little bit during the summer. I know it always says you're not supposed to run them without the drive belt on them, but as long as you don't rev the engine up too much to get the clutches to open and close and snap back without the belt there, usually you can get away with it just for running them a little bit during the summer just to pump some fuel through everything and keep them going. The next thing I do is I set each one of them up with a battery tender. So as you can see right here is the battery tender for one of them, also the one for the boat that happens to be there as well. But what we did is each one of them has some sort of a permanently mounted uh, way to hook the battery tender up. So in this case on the Mountain Max, I built this little attachment that hooks onto the battery tender cable, goes up here and ties into the port where the heated face shield plugs in. So I will put the link in the description to buy the little RCA adapter. Also, I bought a little uh, battery tender replacement end, cut the existing end off of it, and then I put this adapter on there. So I'll put a link to that in the description. You can use that to charge during the summer. So then we also use these battery tenders here, in this case, the 12 volt little automatic battery tender. These work really well. They make the batteries last quite a bit longer because it keeps them on a slight trickle charge during the summer. So that always helps out quite a bit. On the last trip of the year, we made sure we ran the fuel in these down to about half a tank or so, so they're not full, and the level's not too high that it could try to leak through the carburetors or anything like that if there was a needle and seat that got stuck. Um, but I also try to make sure that I don't have any fuel that contains ethanol in it. So there's several ways you can try to do that. You can try to make sure that you've purchased the fuel from a non-ethanol station, uh, there's also stations that have ethanol and non-ethanol on the same handle at the station, so you've got to make sure that you've run plenty of non-ethanol fuel through that handle before you pump the fuel for your snowmobiles. So we always make sure to get the non-ethanol fuel because that'll keep through the summer. And I find if I leave them with about a half a tank, maybe even a quarter tank, that works really well. Come fall, just fill it up, and it's ready to go. So the fuel doesn't get too old, and I don't mess around with stabilizer or anything like that. I've tried that in the past and just found that this is the easiest and best practice with the least amount of money. As far as that fuel goes, if you're not real sure on how to tell if you have ethanol or non-ethanol fuel, you can pick up one of these little testers on uh, Amazon. I'll put a link in the description to this little guy. It was about $12 for this little bottle and kit. But what you do is on the back side here, you fill it up to this blue line with just tap water. And then you fill it up the rest of the way with fuel that you're not sure if it has ethanol or you want to see how much ethanol it might have in it. Then you shake the bottle really, really well and let it settle for a few minutes and you'll be able to take the reading off of here. The reason this works is because the ethanol bonds to the water somehow and adds the line up into here or wherever it might be for the amount of ethanol that's in there. So we'll go ahead and try this and just for fun see how our fuel is. It should be non-ethanol, at least it was purchased from a non-ethanol station, so let's give it a shot. So I filled it with tap water right to that blue line, and then we'll go ahead and get some fuel. I'll just fish some out of one of these machines just for fun to test it 
and see what we can find. So here we've got our fuel and we'll go ahead and dump it in the little bottle to the measurement line. So here you can see just the first start of the test. I put the fuel in it up to the red line. Water's up to the blue line. I have not shaken it yet, so we'll go ahead and give it a good shake and let it sit for a few minutes. So here is the result. You can see the fuel, or the level at least, is still up to the red line. And then you come down here. See if we can get the camera to focus here. And there you can see the line. So this particular fuel has little to no ethanol in it. So that's what you want to see for storage for the summer if you're trying to use completely non-ethanol fuel is just like that. So like I said, you can pick up this little tester. It's kind of a fun thing to play with if you're curious about some fuel that you're getting in your town. Uh, I think it was about $12 or something for this little tester and I'll link to it in the description. So we'll go ahead and get the rest of these pushed back into position, get all the battery tenders hooked up. All the repairs that we know were broken from the season are all taken care of. And so everything's all ready to go. Partway through the summer, maybe a couple times, we'll start them up, run them for a few minutes, make sure the battery tenders are all doing what they're supposed to be doing. And then come the latter part of August, September, sometime in there, once we get done with the bee stuff, we will start getting ready for sled season. We'll have the videos for the uh, preseason maintenance and all that stuff and get going on that. And we'll be ready to go again for next year. So hope everybody enjoyed the video. Remember, you can't finish a project without getting started.